What is JavaScript? JavaScript is a programming language built into your web browser. It can interact with the HTML and CSS on your web pages. It is considered client-side scripting and is loosely based on C and C++ programming languages. So if you're already familiar with one of these, you are already a step ahead. A good place to start is defining the types of scripting that are available to us. First, we have what JavaScript is, client-side scripting. It works only in the browser. There are other types of client-side scripts available, but JavaScript is the primary one used on the internet today. There's also server-side scripting. This works only on the server side. It has no direct interaction with the web page inside your browser, but can load content developed on the server into the browser. There are many, many different languages in this category, PHP, JSP, ASP, and many, many others. Let's take a look at JavaScript's relationship to HTML and CSS. We already know that HTML provides the page structure. CSS provides the appearance of the HTML. JavaScript adds an additional layer to our browser experience by making the HTML and CSS interactive. It can respond to user actions such as input, movements, mouse clicks, and key presses. It can also update page content and update page elements. Continuing with some JavaScript basics, the code is interpreted by the browser. There is literally a code interpreter built into the browser. JavaScript, because of that, works only inside the browser, hence the term client-side scripting because you're working with the web client. JavaScript can respond to different browser-based events, such as the mouse being clicked, a keyboard key being pressed, when a page loads, and there are many other browser-based events that JavaScript can tap into. It's time to take a look at some JavaScript syntax. JavaScript requires opening and closing script tags. These are essentially HTML tags indicating a script between them. Here we have an opening and closing script tag, just like we would normally expect to see with other HTML style tags. The script tag requires a type attribute. This indicates the type of script that will be inside the tags. In this case, our type is going to be equal to text slash JavaScript. So here we have a complete script tag with script type equals JavaScript and then the closing portion of the tag. The script tag normally goes in the document head, although this is not a requirement because you can put a script anywhere in your document or have it placed in an external file. Let's start looking at some JavaScript syntax and structure. Each JavaScript statement ends with a semicolon, sometimes expressed as each line of code, but each statement is much more accurate. This is a syntax requirement. As we're going through the course, we'll get more into the specifics of what is a statement within JavaScript. Let's talk for a moment about JavaScript security and its limitations. Security is built into the language and the interpreter for the browser itself, but the security is not bulletproof. If we're working with confidential user data, it's up to us as coders to make sure that our applications are as secure as possible, both on the client side and the server side. JavaScript cannot access the local file system except for reading and writing cookies. The overall quality of the code is up to the coder, and that's you. Hello and welcome to your code samples for lesson one. It's important to remember that you should have already listened to your lesson content and read your book reading assignment before you start reviewing this session. Please take a look at our work style here. In the middle main screen area, we have a text editor. And in the background here, we have two different web browsers that we'll be reviewing our code with. It's very important to have at least a couple different web browsers available to you for testing your code because sometimes code can behave differently in different browsers. Ideally, three to four web browsers on your system is just simply a good idea. Right now, the current recommended ones to test with are Firefox, Chrome, Opera, and of course, Internet Explorer. 
One of the key concepts to remember while we're starting this first exercise is that there are many things in learning JavaScript that we need to think about in kind of a non-linear format. Sometimes we just have to dive into more advanced concepts, even though we may not know all the details of those concepts, but just start using them. Now it's time to dive into some of the things that we've looked at in the lesson and with our reading. In this session, we'll be looking at two very, very simple scripts that have already been developed. Each time we look at one of the scripts, we'll start off with key components of the script that have been removed and put in a scratch area. So we'll be pulling from that as we add information to the script and the code that we'll be actually working with. It's a very, very simple page to get started with. There's really just an H1 tag and an image tag. That's all there is at this point in time, but it's a good starting point. And the key here is to remember that no matter what we're doing, JavaScript can do far more than what we're showing. It's just we need to start simple and work with basic pages initially and go from there. We'll take a look at what this page looks like in our first browser. This is it loaded. We'll do a quick reload just to make sure. It simply says lesson number one sample page and shows an image of a zero. In Chrome, it looks exactly the same. We're all set to go at that point in time. Now we're going to go back to our text document and we're going to first grab some information from our scratch area here. We're going to choose an on load event that we're going to put into the body tag and go from there. Now the on load event, remember, will trigger only something after everything in the page has been loaded. So what we have here is going to do an on load for an alert box that's simply going to let us know that the page is fully loaded. The code for the on load with the alert in the middle of it is very, very simple. Please pay attention to the double quote on the outside and the single quote on the inside for what the alert message actually is. It's important to keep your quotes matched up like this as we'll find out more about later in the course. From here, we're just gonna make sure that we save our document in our text editor and then make sure that we've got it reloaded in our browser. Although the JavaScript is dynamic as we're working on it and dealing with it in the browser, Nothing is dynamic about the page saves in our text editor and the reload. So we have to make sure that we've done that. Sometimes when you're working in this fashion, it is easy to forget that small little step and try and wonder why something's not working properly. So now we'll reload it in our browser and we see that our alert has popped up immediately as the page is fully loaded. We just say OK and we're set to go. Let's switch over to our other browser, do the exact same reload and we get the same alert box and we know everything is working properly.